that most men live lives of quiet desperation. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because it's true. You just live you're just in this world where you just can't wait to run away. But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment, and there's a bunch of people out there that have these deeply unsatisfying lives is because I think there are so many people that are working all day long, doing something deeply unsatisfying and almost painful, soul-killing. They're stuck in traffic all day, and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that. They relish the time to take it in the bathroom and look at their phone. I mean, they do that. That's a highlight of someone's day. They get in traffic on the way home. They get home after that. They're watching television. And if people have a regular day job, if you could just find some one thing you do as a passion project and just keep building on it, just keep watering it, keep adding fertilizer, keep giving it attention, keep giving its focus, and you can escape. And you can be self-serving. You could be okay. You're going to be okay. Making furniture feels good. If you make furniture, you make furniture for a living and you feel great satisfaction that you sell that furniture. Look, man, if you can do that, you could cut those corners perfectly and sand everything down nice and stain it, and then it's done. And you get to satisfy and you sell to someone and that pays your bills. That is infinitely more satisfying than being stuck in some fucking cubicle working for someone that you don't want to work for. Having to have these stupid office meetings, talking to people in human resources, sitting down with your supervisor where they evaluate your job performance. And you need to be enthusiastic about this company. This company is your future. This guy likes, kill me now. There are a lot of people out there that would way rather do something else, and I hope they understand that they can. And people that are trapped in bad situations. One of the problems is you feel like this is your future. You feel like and you can't get out of that. There's no hope. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no rainbow. And if you feel like that, that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting. But if you can look at if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I kind of being fucked here. I'm in credit card debt. I'm working a shitty job. I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those ideas. I need to feed them and water them. And I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. Everyone has a different personality. They have different interests and different things that they would be satisfied pursuing. That's not encouraged. What's encouraged is to go find a job. What's encouraged is go find someplace that you can shove yourself into. To find a square hole you can stick your round peg and just jam it in there and shave down the top and the bottom so you slide in with all this extra space on the sides and feel like it for the rest of your life. Because you need a job because you're indebted because you have credit cards because you have student loans. After all, that's what everybody does and so you do it too. That's what's wrong. You have an apartment you have to pay for. You have a car you leased. You have a wife that you have to feed. Do you have a child? Do you have to raise? You have your mortgage. You have your this. You have your that. And that's where it all comes from. Well, the opportunity takes place usually when you're young and you don't have any responsibility. That's when you have your options. Your options are severely limited the more you gather responsibilities. Like if I had to as a 51-year-old father of three, a married man, who pays taxes, has a house and a mortgage and a business and all that jazz. If I had to quit everything now and struggle the way I struggled as a stand-up comedian, it would never work. But the only way I could be this person now is if I took that chance when I was 21 when I was dead broke and had my cars repossessed and all that stuff. That's the only way you ever get where you want to go. You have to take a path that's dangerous, and most people want to take the safe path. The safe path leaves you stuck in quiet desperation almost every time. It's hell. It's hell. But can people just make that change? Look, I believe it is. You have to plan it out. The way you can change is you have to put aside enough money to give yourself a window. And then you have to have a plan and you have to spend all your waking hours outside of whatever job you do planning your escape. And you have to come to the realization very clearly that you are up. You got yourself stuck. So whatever you're doing, you have to do it as your life depends on it and whether it is you're trying to be an author. If you're going to try to be an author and you're working 8 hours a day plus commuting, plus family responsibilities or whatever else you have. Whatever time that you have, you have to attack like you're trying to save the world, you're trying to save your life. You don't want to drown that one in a half hours a day that you have to write goddamn. You better be caffeinated and motivated. You gotta go, you got to get after, and you got to have the discipline that most people don't have those things. Most people don't understand what it's like to go for something and to know that the consequences of not doing that are horrific. I think there's an important thing, too. Failure is important. It is important. I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a very uncomfortable feeling. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. That is when you feel like you screw something up. 
Like when I've had bad podcasts, my podcast has always gotten better afterward. When I've had bad stand-up sets, I've always gotten better after that. Because those bad sets motivate you. They give you a perspective like, hey, here are some clear examples of where you what not to do. Yeah, and don't look at these failures as proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. You have to make mistakes. You've been there. You feel it, you understand what it is, and then you have that time to adjust. That's why losing in life is so important. Whether it's getting dumped, getting fired, losing a game, loss, those feelings where things didn't work out your way, that's important because it lets you know this is a bad feeling that comes when it goes wrong and you improve. And then it makes the good feelings of victory all the better. And I mean that in a relative sense, like even getting good at something. Forget about victory. Making a terrible book that gets rejected by every publisher, and then writing a good one, and people accepting like, I got better. Yes, those feelings of failure are critical for your motivation. You see an old person walking down the street, you go, oh, that person has always been an old person. No, that was a baby. That was a baby that became a 90-year-old man. There's a progression that you're not witnessed, you don't see it. And that takes place in everything. It takes place in authors, it takes place in comedians and musicians. There's a starting point. And then with time and focus, and as long as you reevaluate and reassess and constant, objectively look at what you're doing and then pursue it with passion and focus, you get better at things. Don't be scared of failure. I think failure is awesome for you. And that's one of the reasons why, as I said, I like doing things that I suck at. I just feel like people need inspiration and they need guidelines. And as long as you can just start moving, just get action, like just getting just movement.